Dames en heren, hartelijk welkom. Ladies and gentlemen, welkom at the Institute for Physical Safety in Schaarsbergen. Great to see you here. And it's not just a couple of people, but there's a wonderful turnout. Welcome at the seventh Fire Safety and Science Congress. That based on the uh, six predecessors, this is a new element. And in the days ahead, I'll reinforce the link between practice and science. We're proud to see you here. I'd like to explain that's because you're a magnificent cross-section of the field we interact with. Even the ESCA board is present here. The board members, welcome. Great to see you here. I'm doing this because most of you here are Dutch. That's why I'll keep speaking Dutch. But one of our novelties today is that we also have interpreters interpreters who are interpreting everything we say simultaneously into English and vice versa. Welcome, guests. And there's a second reason why we're proud. There's standing room only here. We've sold out every seat. And we're also proud because the Congress is being live streamed and others can view it as well. And we're also arranging um, learning content for this Congress. And we have yet another reason for pride. You didn't know this, but in Schaasbergen, at these premises, we had our own water disaster on 28 July 2014. We had uh, a full foot of water flooding this room. And you're the very first Congress since that flood. That was a big mess. We're delighted that we could do that. And we're pleased to welcome you here in our house. The Fire Safety and Science Congress matters a lot to us. At this institute and our Fire Safety Academy, we provide a lot of information knowledge about uh, fire prevention and doctrine. But this Congress is not an isolated event. In addition to this Congress, we organize the annual Incident Research Day in which we feature lessons learned and enhance knowledge. And in the same context, we uh, provide several mini symposiums annually about current events concerning uh, fire prevention and firefighting. So that's basically a triptych for this Congress. It, it figures within that context. Before I hand you over to Elie von Stream, my chairperson, I'd like to thank everybody that participated in making this happen, not only the project leader, René Hagen, but our partners who helped bring about the substantive preparations, such as the TU and the right and the contributor to the sponsoring. That's why we were able to mitigate the admission fee at an unprecedented level compared to previous years. So being here is far more appealing financially. And I hope that you'll uh, find the content equally appealing. We're proud to have you here and pleased. We're proud to present a, a nice program. And the program that will be attended by participants from 10 different countries, we're delighted about that. We're proud about that, too. The program features substantive elements that might be uh, food for follow-up over several days. I'm delighted to see you here. I'm pleased to hand you over to the chairperson. And I hope you'll have some inspiring and enlightening days. I've got lots of books with me. Good morning. This is a wonderful site for the Seventh National Congress on Fire Safety and Science. And we're going to take this leap together. 
All the seats are sold out, the standing room only, so uh, consider yourselves fortunate. We're going to connect uh, fire safety and science, which means that we feature a wonderful program today and tomorrow. Mr. Zal just told you about it both domestically and internationally it takes this to a new dimension. And you know that when you're at a sold out gathering, in some cases, if um, the tickets were oversold, then people can attend this uh, outside from video screens, but we're not doing that. But we've uh, modernized this by featuring video streaming to enable everybody wherever they are to attend this Congress. And please consider that today because you're on camera. So that means that anything you do is going to be recorded for eternity. Bear that in mind. Of course, I've told the speakers about this. Additionally, the camera will um, feature shots of the audience now and then. Just wanted to let you know. Another very important point for your information, because this is an important symposium in Congress. We've done this together with an important partner, which is the Underwriters Laboratory of the U.S. It's a renowned research institute that the IFV is fortunate to do a lot of business with. And because of this partnership, we're able to feature the program today and tomorrow, and we're particularly happy about that. That's why I'm pleased to welcome Steve Kerber, who will be one of our uh, speakers this morning. Bob James, good to have you with us. And of course, Gordon Biesefeld. We're delighted to see all of you here, and we're uh, pleased that you're contributing to make this uh, conference even better than ever. Innovation, research, science, combined with fire safety in the fire department, we'd say, yes, but the fire department, isn't that a conservative organization? And perhaps they're right. And that shouldn't surprise you, because if we look at the substance and core of our profession, it relates largely to uh, interests that lives depend on. We need to have uh, proven technology and security. We shouldn't try something in practice that doesn't work. And that's why I don't really mind being accused of being a, a fairly conservative organization. But that's our interest in guaranteeing safety for our own people and to keep civilians as safe as possible. But that same firefighting organization has understood that um, stag Standing still is not an option in this hectic, dynamic world. There are a lot of safety issues that uh, confront us, and we need to respond. We can't do that with obsolete knowledge. We need to use current knowledge and future knowledge. A lot of things are changing, and these are obvious statements by uh, chairman of the day that have to report things. I just figured I'd let you know anyway, because if you look around you at the environment, at our surroundings, at technology and a society. In traffic alone, we see lots and lots of changes in society. S expectations are changing. Self-sufficiency has changed with respect to the past. And new technology is being presented so that we can do an even better job than ever. That's why we have to take innovation into account. And the fire department has done that. A few years ago, we took a major step to devise a future vision. We call that uh, firefighting tomorrow. I'm curious how that's being translated. Yes, I see a nod. It's a future vision that has given us a glimpse of what the world will be like in a few years, as far as we can tell. Of course, we don't have a crystal ball, but we have focused on our profession. And the focus means that we're going to um, head far more than in the past to the front end of the chain. And simultaneously, we'll be investing in uh, very intelligent repression. The reason I'm saying this is because often people think that the fire chiefs in the Netherlands are only interested in the front end of the chain and uh, are no longer interested in repression. That's not true. Both matter. But each day, we realize even what you uh, what you bring on yourself at the front end is almost impossible to compensate at the rear. 
So we've got people at the front end who have invested in science. Fire safety engineering is now taken for granted. And that's why a lot of people have introduced science at that level, at the front end. And now we need to uh, carry that over to the back of the chain, i.e. to repressions. And that's the transition we're going to bring about to get science far closer to repression than it has been thus far. Ladies and gentlemen, you always need somebody to uh, pull the cart. And when you li list names, there's always somebody who's overlooked, but that's part of the game because in recent years, quite a few people have been tugging at this cart to uh, ensure that science is introduced in our organization. One of the um, predecessors and the people at the vanguard one of the lecturers that figured prominently and is still a background figure to, to stimulate us, René Hagen and Ricardo Weaver, who were incredibly important in carrying us into that world of uh, science, and the Scientific Council under the aegis of Paul Ferlan, who's an important leader there, and our project Innovation is necessary under the aegis of Gerard van Klaveren. These are all initiatives that you see emerging to get different a different mindset in motion and launch science. When I use the term conservative, I don't mean that we never thought before the ideology about uh, firefighting tomorrow. And the, over coffee, I was talking to somebody who tempted me by asking me when I started uh, firefighting, that was uh, several years ago, that was in the late 70s. And looking back from where I've come to where, uh, to where I was to where I am now, huge strides have been made. We've, come, uh, we've made a quantum leap and uh, I'm certainly not trivializing all the changes we've invested in, but science is going to become a major factor. The need to connect repression with science to ensure that you can uh, apply science uh, through tests and trials. And I think that that's important that the uh, fire department applies scientific uh, research. We, as we've seen in a few activities, for example, we've uh, conducted research on uh, 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 air pressure foam, and we've investigated the offensive um, in interior attack with all kinds of steps. And recently, a few weeks ago, there was that experiment in Zutphen that we might talk about later on. And we also conducted trials to try to comprehend fires. The, today's topic is try to understand fire. What may s seem so simple to us as experts is, um, uh, well, it's a rude awakening when you uh, follow along a day of trials in Zutphen because you see that fires are often far more recalcitrant than we think they are. What's important in that development of innovation and renewal, and I can't emphasize enough that this is initiated exclusively by the mindset we need to make the work of our firefighters safer and we need to improve safety for our civilians. That's the drive behind innovation. It's not simply uh, for trivial cutbacks, despite the fact that some people say there's an underlying agenda. The, the innovation is under the Giza, but it really serves cutbacks. N nothing could be further from the truth. When I look at the initiatives, there are only two reasons for them. You want to make sure that the safety, that uh, we improve safety conditions for our firefighters wherever possible, and we need to protect the safety of our civilians wherever possible. That's why we need to innovate and renew to make sure that we do this the, as best we can. I can't emphasize that often enough. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, back to the fire drills and the trials. Many of you know that we've got a domestic project which is Inhibit Fire. And that project is about uh, turnout times. You know, we have uh, a law that uh, forces us to uh, have certain, to stick to certain response times. Not, it's not only about how quick the uh, firefighters can be on site, there are also response time guidelines. At the end of this 
year the project will yield results. It's the, but it, that will be the start of a new process, not the end of anything. What we realized is that if you want to talk about it seriously, you need to understand fires very clearly because we've taken a look at what the firefighters can do, then you know what fire does. Of course, we know a lot, but there are many things that we don't know yet. So we launched the project with a video that I brought with me from the U.S. from Underwriters Laboratory four or five years ago. All of you have seen it where there are two homes that are ignited next to each other, and it, they show that within three minutes, there's no chance. It's going to become um, uh, a fire that reaches everywhere. It's become a one-liner in, in uh, within three minutes, your, your house will be on fire. So during the Rembrandt project, we asked, is that the case? And we thought, perhaps there's something wrong here because we've got the recalcitrant practice of our people. And we said, we're going to conduct some trials in the Dutch situation to see what types of materials Dutch houses contain to see what the effects are. And if I tell you that in some situations it's almost impossible to generate that type of fire, then the idea is any house is on fire within uh, three minutes and it flashes over within three minutes. No way. But practice is more recalcitrant. So it's nice that we took the effort to conduct those trials. We still need to analyze them, but that's why it's so important to conduct applied scientific research so that you can talk about it based on substance. We're going to have a great day. We're going to hear some wonderful presentations, and we're going to watch them too. And that will take us through um, science and firefighting. I'm going to give the real speakers the floor very quickly, but first I'd like to make a few general remarks. I'm going to tell you about the program, which is generally as follows. I'll introduce the first speaker in a moment, then we'll take a break, and I hope that you'll feel that many positive demands have been made of you, and after that, we'll continue until lunch with a few more speakers during the break. I look forward to meeting you in the circle around us. There will be coffee there, and at the end of the morning, I'll tell you where lunch is served so that you find your way there. As for some general remarks, of course, please um, switch your cell phones off or put them in vibrate mode, not just because the sound would uh, be a nuisance, but it does impact our uh, technical services and it would cause a lot of other problems. So if you don't know exactly how to do it, we've got a bucket with water and I can help you that way too. We have an evacuation plan and I want to notify you about that. You see, all kinds of signs come on. If, uh, if you hear the signal, please proceed to the exit and the uh, Occupational assistance people from the uh, IFV will um, escort you outside. All presentations will be available afterwards and will also be posted on the site of the Institute for Physical Safety. That's the info point. And last but not least, which was why I had so much to carry with me, one of our lecturers, Rene Hagen, has put together a book in both Dutch and English, and the Dutch book was already available. I'd like to show this to you. This is the Foundation for Fire Safety. It's a voluminous book that you can order from the IFV site, but we also have the English version, the basic for fire safety, same content, different title, and especially for the for our foreign guests, but also the Dutch ones who would like to have this book. If you hand your business card to the reception at the end, we'll send you a copy of the book. It's not free of charge, but then at least you won't have to uh, see how to order it from the site. I recommend it. Finally, we have a Twitter account, which is not here, but it's on the main page. If you want the rest of the world to enjoy this fine moment, we have a t Twitter account, hashtag FSS Congress 2014. 
and you can share your uh, perceptions and experiences there. That's what I had to tell you about general remarks, ladies and gentlemen.